You do a kalumah koyach, you have shivim umus to shivim koyach is benefesh. That every um represents a certain koyach in in the soul, which yidin also have, and the 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 uh, mission of yidin is to use that for good and to arbitrarize to to bring it to a higher level and to use it for good and so on. So so that all all these uh, uh, seventy nations, the tendencies which they have, the personality types which they have, are also reflected among yidin and so on. Because of that, there's always a great sadness when any nation is destroyed. And he goes on to say something radical. And Chazal say that when the Yitzhahara will be destroyed, that uh, when, Chaz- uh, when uh, Mashiach comes, the Yitzhahara will be destroyed, it says, It says it's going to be a great weeping and wailing. It's going to be a great weeping and wailing. It says that the Tzaddikim will weep and wail because, because it's... Uh, it's Nidmulam Kahar, because it will seem to them that it's horror, that it was such a mountain that we needed to climb in order to conquer it, they'll be tremendously moved at the end of the whole struggle, seeing the enormity of the whole thing, the enormity of man's ethical struggle, the enormity of the religious struggle, they'll be so moved by what they went through and the great uh, fight, the great struggle that, that they were forced to undertake, that they'll just break down a tear. But Allah Baikha and the Rishoyim, the evildoers will also weep because they'll see how they missed everything and they ruined everything because they're going to see like uh, then the Yitzhahara at the end of days is going to appear to them like a little furrow. They could have jumped over it at any time, but they never did because they never worked up the willpower. That's that's what it says. Think about Rabbi Tzaddik learns it up differently. Rabbi Tzaddik says it's going to be a weeping and a wailing, a crying, a great weeping and the wailing and the gnashing of tears because we will mourn the evil one. We will mourn the demise of the evil one. Because, um, because, 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 uh, 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 like it says that now he go, takes it further it's not only about Midas and Koiches but the Yitzhahor is the one who enables us to have a voice Hashem continuing with that theme continuing with the theme of service continuing with the theme of service the Yitzhahor is the one who allows us to engage in service the Yitzhahor is the one who enables us uh, to engage in service by by by, by uh, allowing us to have Bechir by presenting us with the opposition with antagonism by always tempting us to violate the will of God by, by thus enabling us to overcome the temptation in that way the Yitzhara in fact facilitates avoid Hashem if there wouldn't be Yitzhara there wouldn't be any avoid Hashem if we wouldn't have anything to overcome we wouldn't have any avoid Hashem so Reb Tzadik says that uh, that's the Indian of the Yelola that's the Indian of the weeping and the lamentation which will be uh, which uh, will be uh, um, Undertaken at the end of days, that it represents a, a certain sense of tragedy and a lamentation for the evil one himself, because he also has achievements in himself, because he contributed to the uh, he contributed to the to the uh, 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 undertaking of avoidus Hashem in this world. Without him, avoidus Hashem would be impossible. That avoidus Hashem would be impossible. So it, it, there's a certain obviously he's in, in his way is connected to kedusha in his way. In his way, he, 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 he's a part of the show of Kedusha, so to speak. Therefore, it's his Kedayim is all a Maspetayim. When, when he dies after doing his whole thing and tempting us all through the generations, we weep because that union of avoid is going away. And I remember that... Uh, and he, he, he brings it back. The 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 destruction of any nation. The destruction of any nation is the destruction of that specific koyach, that specific yitzahara that that nation represents. Now I was looking for the shtickle, unfortunately I can't find it. Once again I'm exposing the Amarats. If anyone could find the shtickle for me, I would be tremendously grateful. There's a place where Reb Tzadik uh, uh, puts this down much sharper, and he speaks, uh, he focuses very specifically on the Indian of Shaul HaMelech. Focuses very specifically on the Indian of Shaul HaMelech, and uh, the question of Shaul HaMelech was Bechir Hashem. Shalom Melch was chosen by God to be the king of the tribes of Israel. How could it be that he could do such a thing and just disobey when he knew what he was supposed to do? And he was supposed to, uh, he was supposed to wipe out Amalek, and he was supposed to get rid of all the animals. Agog. How could he do this thing? So he he works with uh, he works with uh, with. Uh, Along these lines, along the lines that he goes here, but he takes it all the way, and he he says that uh, 
that uh, he speaks about this thing where uh, when Mashiach comes and Vos HaKadosh Baruch Hu Vishachat L'Malach HaMovas and Hu Malach HaMovas, Hu Satnu Malach HaMovas Yitzhara and HaKadosh Baruch Hu will slaughter the evil one that uh, there will be a great weeping and a wailing, a great lamentation it will be as a hespit for him and uh, and he speaks about this Iyin and Amolek is the Sitracha Amolek is the Sitracha so that uh, so that in the destruction of Amolek he doesn't over here he focuses that that the uh, that all the different nations represent different Koikas but in that stick he brings it out uh, very clearly that Amolek is running in tandem in league with the Satan and Amolek uh, enables us to be Oivet Hashem Amolek enables us to be able to Hashem by always standing against them, by presenting opposition to us, by presenting Asher Korcha Baderech. Amolek is always trying to cool us off. Amolek is always opposing our fervor and avoid Hashem. And in that way, Amolek enables our avoid Hashem. There must be the opposition. Amolek enables our avoid Hashem by by forcing us to rise to the challenge, uh, to overcome and to uh, oppose and to oppose Amolek's influence. Um, so in that way, the, so in that, so in that way, Amolek also has a place in the drama of Avoid Hashem. Amolek also has a place in the pageant. So therefore, Amolek also deserves to be mourned in a certain way. And there's a certain sadness in the complete destruction of Amolek, and that's what Shaul had in mind. Over there, he says it like that: that that's what Shaul had in mind. That Shaul didn't want to be the one to bring that that Yiddish Indian of Amolek to an end. He didn't want to bring that. He didn't want to bring the, be the one to bring that that Yiddish Indian of Amolek to an end. To an end. That's what he had in mind. Now, uh, it's so, it's so if so, he says. So w- w- why is it a tiny on show? Why is it a tiny on show? What he wanted was avoid He wanted to keep this avoid fighting Amolek alive. That's why he didn't want Amolek to be completely destroyed because he didn't want to lose that avoid. So, so wh- I'm sorry. The kind of second Chetakadim. Oh. Oh, oh, right. so, that's the vote. That's the vote. That's the vote. So, so, so he says because that show was a melech, and that's not the begin of malchus. That's not the begin of malchus. So, uh, this whole shtickle is very hard to understand because, uh, because look, uh, all the cheshbonos are very nice, but uh, there's no question that uh, the Abish that commanded him to. Uh, they wish to command him to do this. So what's the difference? You think like this, you want this avoid, you want that avoid. So what's going on? What does the whole thing mean? He was a melech, it's in the beginning of Malchus. So um, I once asked uh, my Rebbe, uh, Rebbe Tzvi Hamnik, so there's one sign about this. He told me the following thing, a beer in the Tzadik al pi Torah's Chabad. So he told me that uh, that uh, Basically, when Shmuel Hanovi came to Shaul HaMelech, so he, he mustered a voice, he rebuked him, and he told him, I heard that now you have these carbonists, you're saying that you want to save the animals for carbon, and he goes on to, uh, goes on to rebuke him. You, you weren't supposed to do this, you were supposed to get rid of all the animals, slaughter everything, the people, the animals, everything. So, um, like uh, my good friend Avram Weinfeld pointed out here, basically, it goes back to uh, Kasha that Arizal asks, which is that, how is it possible for other Mauritian to uh, do the chet of eating from the Eitzatahs. The way we understand it basically is that it's only as a result of eating from the Eitzatahs, it's only as a result of eating of the tree of knowledge that, that Odom and Chava became Yoyde Toivara. They only attained knowledge of good and evil because they ate from the tree. They only were able to choose, had that awareness of being able to choose between good and evil because they ate from the tree. That means that sin came into the world, free will, and the possibility of sinning, the knowledge of good and evil, came into the world only because they ate from the tree of knowledge. If that's the case, how is it possible for them to do that originally?